In international news, the U.S. government's top official on Africa does not believe there will be significant policy changes towards the continent, despite regional concerns at the prospect of a Republican presidency under Donald Trump. In a broad-ranging roundtable with journalists on the sidelines of the U.N. General Assembly in New York, Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs Linda Thomas-Greenfield also touched on sanctions in Zimbabwe and electoral concerns in the DRC. When you look at Africa, it seems to... She says it's a topic that comes up all the time in her bilateral meetings, Donald Trump and his protectionist rhetoric and what that could mean for Africa. Kind of the last frontier. And there are people... The, those opportunities are going to be there. And it is the private sector that will uh, be the driver of uh, opportunities for investment uh, on the continent of Africa. And they will engage with policymakers to ensure that our policies support that. So I don't see that there will be any significant diminishment of our commitment to continue to work on the continent of Africa. There will be differences in style. Uh, there will be differences in focus uh, and priorities, and there will be new initiatives. Uh, but I, I dare say that uh, when we look at the initiatives that are important to Africa, they cross party lines. She expressed deep concern about protests in the Democratic Republic of Congo over the deferral of elections, while urging the government there to open up an inclusive dialogue with the opposition to agree an election date. We expressed our concerns about the breakdown in, in the dialogue recently that led to the violence that we witnessed uh, this week uh, in the DRC. Uh, we think that President Kabila has a historic opportunity to transition uh, for the first time uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo uh, from one uh, elected head of state uh, to a, a second elected head of state, and that's a big deal. And that would be, I think, an extraordinary legacy for, uh, for him. On Zimbabwe, President Robert Mugabe's call for the United States to lift sanctions, which he blamed for the economic woes in his country. The economic woes in Zimbabwe are a result of the policies of the Zimbabwean government. They are not a result of our sanctions. They are feeling the effects of the sanctions, and that's why uh, it's part of the uh, talking points uh, that President Mugabe and other leaders from Zimbabwe use, and they uh, uh, try to argue uh, uh, strongly that the sanctions are, are hurting our ordinary people. Uh, the sanctions are, are, are hurting um, the, those individuals who are involved in keeping this country from becoming um, uh, a modern and thriving uh, democracy uh, that takes care of its people. Uh, the demonstrations that we have seen taking place in Zimbabwe are an expression of the discontent that people in this country have. And while she acknowledged the few strong men left in Africa, she called on the media to focus more on the successful transitions of power that have happened far and wide across the continent. Sherman Bryceby's SABC News, New York.